it's all right. So the meeting is being recording, recorded. Very good. All right, so can I share screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Screen. Okay. All right, um, hi everyone. Uh, this is a series of lectures on hyperkähler manifolds. Um, I'm going to start with fairly elementary things, but uh, we will relatively quickly get into uh, more advanced stuff. So um, don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, and here we go. So, all right. Oh, something is wrong with my Apple Pencil now. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. All right. So the first thing that um, I'm going to start to do is mainly to fix some notation. So. In this first lecture, we'll be working with C infinity manifolds, okay? So um, that's our first part. So if we have a C infinity manifold, uh, we're going to denote it by M, right? And we denote it by TM. the tangent bundle. Of M. And uh, TM star. Uh oh, the cotangent bundle. So this is, this is the real tangent bundle, right? My C infinity manifold is a real manifold. So when I write star, I mean the real dual, right? Okay. And um, we also will talk about tensors. So for any uh, pair of non-negative integers, K and L, uh, the sections, and by sections, we, all, we in this part, we always mean C infinity sections the sections of the bundle. Uh, now I'm going to take TM tensor power to the K, and then I'm going to tensor that with the cotangent bundle TM star tensor power L. These are called KL tensor, tensors. Uh, sorry, something is wrong again with my Apple pencil. Oh, there we go are called KL tensors. Okay. Um, and uh, of course, sections of wedge K of uh, TM star are called differential one forms, right? C infinity differential one forms. I'm sorry, K forms, not one forms. Um, K forms. And um, also the, um, the sections of uh, the tangent bundle, we also call them vector fields, right? So alternatively, uh, vector fields, which are 
the sections of TM, right? Uh, can be defined as first order differential operators. on C infinity functions on your manifold, right? So most of the time we think of a vector field in terms of how it acts on a C infinity function, right? And this action is basically uh, taking derivatives, right? Of C infinity functions. And it has the usual properties of the derivative. You know, it's, it's linear with respect to constants and it satisfies the Leibniz rule, right? Okay. And um, let me also set down some notation about the coordinates. So in a coordinate chart, um, so in a local coordinate chart, okay, sorry. Um, my computer is heating up a little bit. Uh, Okay, so in a local coordinate chart um, with coordinates uh, x1, xn, the local vector fields, right? Um, ddx1 and then ddxn, they form a basis of of the tangent bundle, right? This is of course a local basis. It will only work on your coordinate chart. And then you have local, local one forms, right? So the local one forms dx1, et cetera, the xn form a basis of differential one forms. All right. And then uh, you can write a local local uh, KL tensor. Uh, that would be, you could write it as a sum a big sum of some C infinity functions, which I will call Ti1 Ik and then J1 Jl. And then I will have my basis of tangent vectors. So the dd x um, I1, ddx Ik, and then I will have my differential one forms. All right. Okay, so this is our notation. And let me now remind you what the Lie bracket is. This is something that is the basis of a lot of uh, what, what people do with, uh, with uh, vector fields, right? So given two vector fields, Um, I'm going to write, write them in local coordinates. So some of the VI DDXI, I going from one to N and W will be the sum of the WI DDXI. Again, I going from one to N, then you can, you can locally write down the Lie bracket. Of course, this is something that's defined globally, right? And we're just writing here the, um, we're just writing the local expression of it, right? So the, the Lie bracket VW can be locally expressed 
as, so you write it like this. So it's the sum for j going from one to n of the sum for i going from one to n. And now what we're gonna do, well, it's, it's the thing that you probably have seen before. Um, you wanna think of this actually in terms of acting on functions, right? So for C infinity, let me write down how it acts for C infinity functions, right? Um, you, you want, you're going to say that, so you wanted to take the commutator of that V and W, right? So this is going to be V acting on the C infinity function W of F. So W is a, is an, is a first, first order differential operator, it acts on F, right? And then V is going to act on the output of W, right? And then minus, as I said, it's the commutator. So you're going to do minus W of V of F, right? So if you think of what, what this means in terms of local coordinates, right? So in local coordinates, v, if V is the sum of the VI DDXI, V of F is the sum of the VI DF DXI, right? So, so if you think about what this means, then you will see the local expression of the Lie bracket up here, it's going to be VI. Remember, I have to act on, on, on F by W first. So, um, and then I act on it by V, right? So I'm going to have the DDXJ here, right? Which acts on F. And then the coordinate will be the, the, the coordinate of W, right? And this is V acting on W of F, right? It's a simple exercise that you can do at home if you have trouble following me right here because I'm going a little bit fast. All right, so this is, um, so this is the Lie bracket and it's, and I said, it's a very foundational thing. You can show that it's independent of the choice of local coordinates. Um, and so it puts, a, it, it puts a, also a um, structure of Lie algebra on the, um, on the space of sections of the tangent bundle, right? On the, on the space of all vector, all C infinity vector fields. All right. So uh, the next thing that we're going to need to introduce is connections. So what's the connection? Uh, that's, that's at the basis of uh, the study that we will do of manifolds, right? So, and they can be defined for any vector bundles. So for any, for a C infinity vector bundle, E on M, a connection is a linear map. which goes from where to where. So usually people write connections with the letter nabla. And it goes from the space of C infinity sections of, the, of your vector bundle E to the space of C infinity sections of the vector bundle E tensored with the cotangent bundle. Okay. So now if you, if you think of the fact uh, that, uh, you know, the cotangent model is the dual, giving yourself a map like this is equivalent to giving yourself a map like this. So you can say nabla goes from C infinity of E tensor the tangent bundle into C infinity of E. So giving yourself a map of this shape or a map of the shape that I had before are, are the same thing, right? Um, and let me put this one in parentheses because I'm not using it right now. And so you have this, uh, you have this linear map, right? From the space of C infinity sections of E to the space of C infinity sections of E tensor, the cotangent bundle. And what you want is you want it, of course, to, to again, satisfy the Leibniz rule. So the connect, a connection is a substitute for taking derivatives again. So, you know, if you have, um, if you have local coordinates, you know how to take derivatives, but, uh, but that's only for functions, right? So what you want to do here, you want to take derivatives of sections of a vector bundle, and that's not always gonna work. So you need to actually say what, how you're taking derivatives. So, so if, because it's, it's, um, 
it, a way of taking derivatives, it has to satisfy the Leibniz rule. And which would say what? Which would say nabla of f times e is equal to f times nabla of e plus e tensored with the differential of the function f for all sec C infinity sections little e of e and C infinity functions f on m, okay? The connection actually doesn't just act on global sections, it also, it also will act on local sections on any open set, right? So, so what we're not actually saying here explicitly is that this is actually well defined on any open set. So you can take simply the sections on any open set and you have the same thing. All right. And whenever you have a connection, it defines a useful linear map. And this is the map, of, you know, this is what I was talking about for taking derivatives, right? So um, for any vector field, little v, nabla defines a linear map uh, nabla v, which goes from the space of C infinity sections of E to the space of C infinity sections of E. So this is the taking derivatives. And what do you do here? You send the section E to nabla, what we call nabla sub Oh, sorry, nabla sub v of e, which is by definition nabla of e acting on v, right? So remember, nabla is something that goes from the C infinity sections of e to the C infinity sections of e tensor tm dual, right? So this nabla of e is a section of e tensor that cotangent bundle and you're acting with it on this tangent vector. So you're pairing the cotangent bundle with the tangent bundle. And then, uh, so they, they kind of cancel each other and you get a section of E, right? So, right, so that's, that's what you get. Or if you want to think of, um, uh, Enabla as going, sorry. My handwriting is getting messed up. Or if we think of Nabla as going from C infinity of E tensor TM into C infinity of E, then uh, this Nabla V of E will be uh, Nabla of E tensor V, right? So that's, I mean, that's another way of thinking about it. That's all. All right. Okay. So this is a connection. Now, most of the time we will be interested in connections, not just on any vector bundle, but on the tangent bundle itself, right? So. Uh, for that, for that particular case, there's a, there's another notion, right? So when e when e is equal to the tangent bundle, um, we can define the torsion of a connection. Well, here I will also again use this um, the previous the other point of view. So here I have E tensor TM. I bet E is TM, so I get TM tensor TM going to C infinity of TM is defined as T of now I'm going to take V. Uh, tensor W and this guy is nabla sub V of W minus nabla sub W of V minus the bracket of V and W. All right, so all of these are vector fields. 
And we say that NABLA is torsion free or some in some in some of the literature people would also use the word symmetric if the torsion is zero. Okay? All right. So this is a useful notion uh, for Riemannian manifolds, and we will see uh, shortly uh, why. Okay. Uh, could someone remind me when I'm supposed to stop for the break, please? Uh, yes, you should uh, stop at 4.50. And we will have a five minute break. Yes. So that's in um, 25 minutes? Yeah. Uh, yes, okay. right. Yes. 20. Okay. Yes, sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, no, that, that's fine. That's fine. I'm uh, yes, I forgot you're in another time zone. Sorry. I have to translate that. That's, yes, that's okay. Yes. Um, all right. So, um, okay. So we're going, doing good time, time wise. Are there any questions so far, anyone? Uh, did anybody want to ask me about anything? Okay, all right. So the next, uh, the next thing about a connection is the curvature. So let me explain about that. So what's a curvature? Um, you've probably heard of curvature. Uh, Euclidean space is what we call flat. It has no curvature. It's not curved, but a lot of the time when you have a Riemannian manifold, which I haven't told you yet what it is, it's not flat, it's curved, okay? So, um, and what does the curvature tell you mainly? I mean, you know that if you take partial derivatives, usually when you take uh, mixed partials, you know, the, the mixed second partials commute, right? So if I do uh, uh, D2F uh, DXI DXJ, DXJ, that's equal to, d2f dxj dxi right i can switch the order of partial differentiation for uh, for functions normally right that's on euclidean space and, and it's also true in local coordinate charts for any manifold right but it's not going to be true in general for an arbitrary connection as i said now we think of the connection as our way of taking derivatives right so if you take a derivative with respect to one vector field then you take the derivative with respect to the other vector field it's not going to be the same in general as switching the order. So switching the order is gonna change uh, the final output of your second derivative, all right? So that's, so the curvature kind of measure that, measures that, that error, you know, and what, and how much, how different are, is it? How different are those two differentiations from each other, right? So what's the difference between uh, taking one derivative first and taking the other one and then switching the order, right? So, but let me give you the formal definition. So the, the curvature of a connection nabla is a linear map uh, which people usually denote by big R and it goes from C infinity of E to C infinity of E tensor wedge two of the cotangent bundle. Or you can think of it as just like before, we can think of it as a linear map going from C infinity of E <clears throat> tensored with wedge two of the tangent bundle into C infinity of E. Or we can think of it uh, as a third way. Now you see, because I have a wedge two of TM here, I can take one of the tensors, one of the TM factors and put it on the other side, right? So I can think of it as uh, an endomorphism. So, or you can think of this as a section, a global section of the endomorphism bundle of E tensored with uh, wedge two of TM dual. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean take one of the TM factors. I meant take the E factor. If you put, um, if over here I take my E factor um, on the first line, I take the E and I put it on the other side, it becomes an E dual, right? So this endomorphism of E, right? This guy here is also C infinity of 
E dual tensor E tensor wedge two of TM dual. Okay. All right. So these are you know three different ways of writing down the curvature. Um, so uh, and and how do we define it? Right. So it can be defined via its action on. sections little e of big E and vector fields V and W as follows. So I'm going to take the point of view, the second point of view, right? So I'm, I'm going to think of the curvature as something going, going from E tensor wedge two of M into E, right? So I'm going to take a section little e of big E and then tensor it with V verge W. And what is this going to be? This is going to be now, I'm going to take nabla V of nabla W of E. So this is what I was talking about. Like I'm taking the first derivative of E with respect to W in the direction of W. Then I'm taking the derivative of that in the direction of V, right? So this is a second derivative here. And I'm going to subtract nabla W of nabla v of e, right? But now actually, because we have arbitrary vector fields, right? And arbitrary vector fields themselves do not commute, right? The commutator of arbitrary vector fields is actually the Lie bracket, right? So I, what, I, what I wanna do here, really, I do wanna subtract the Lie bracket, okay? So normally <clears throat> in an ideal world, right? If you had a flat connection, um, if you had a flat world, right, if your manifold were, were something that you can think of as flat, it's not curved, um, then when you, when you switch the order of differentiation for two arbitrary vector fields, right, it should give you the Lie bracket. So then what the curvature actually does, it measures the difference between switching the order and the Lie bracket, right? And um, <clears throat> so in terms of local coordinates, right, And now you'll see that in local, local coordinates, it's exactly what we wanted before, right? X1, Xn, then what do you get? You get that R of, I can do the um, R of DDXI wedge uh, DDXJ, right? And what's this going to be? This is actually going to be nabla DDXI of nabla ddxj of e minus nabla ddxj nabla ddxi of e. And that's it because what you know is that the bracket of ddxi and ddxj is zero, right? This is a local thing that we're doing here. And you know that the bracket of partial differentiation is zero. So, um, so in, in local coordinates, this is really what you get. So, um, and now well, let me give you a definition. So before we had the definition of torsion, right? You will see how it's a little bit similar, right? The torsion that we had here was, well, it was only defined on a pair of vector field, uh, vector fields, right? So you acted with the connection on one vector field, right? And then minus the action on the other vector field minus the Lie bracket of the two vector fields, right? That was the torsion. But not that the curvature is a little bit different, although it's, it's reminiscent of the torsion, right? So um, you're doing the difference between the differentiation with respect to the, the two vector fields and then their Lie bracket. Now we have the, the fact that it was torsion free when the torsion was zero. So now we talk about when the curvature is zero, right? So the definition here is, We say in the nabla is flat if its curvature is zero. Okay, and you will note if you if you go back to the, to, the, to this uh, description of the curvature as a C infinity section of the endomorphism of E tensor wedge two of T M dual. Um, well, okay, no, maybe I will get back to that later. Sorry, no, let me not let me not say that right now. Okay, so this is. Um, 
So this is our definition of a flat connection. It's zero, it's a flat if it if the curvature if the curvature is zero. All right. Any questions now? Because we're going to pass to a different section now. All right, no questions. Um, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about Riemannian manifolds, right? Those are the, the most important objects for this series of lectures, right? So um, What are Riemannian manifolds? So a C infinity manifold is called Riemannian if it has a Riemannian metric. And I will explain what, what that is. Okay, what is that? That is what we call, in, in the language of tensors, this is a two-zero tensor. And what's a two-zero tensor? If you don't remember, a two-zero tensor is a global section of the second tensor power of the cotangent bundle. Okay. And um, well, it's not just um, a, a section of the second tensor power, but it's also symmetric. What does that mean? It means that it actually belongs to C infinity of seam two of TM dual. And it, it, it needs to have one more property. Um, it has to be positive definite, okay? So and defined a positive definite quadratic form on the tangent space Txm for all x in, in M, right? So uh, the your form is a section of sin two of Tm dual, so it naturally acts on Tm, right? It's a bilinear form on Tm. And you can, you know, when you have a bilinear form, you can just plug in the same vector twice and you get a quadratic form. So you're asking that that quadratic form be positive definite, meaning that, so what you want is, if I take the value at the point X, I want GX of VV to be strictly positive for all V in TXM, not zero, of course, okay? All right. So, so this is a Riemannian manifold. That's it. It, it. it has to have a Riemannian metric, and this is what a Riemannian metric is. Um, so now, when you have a Riemannian metric, and if you have a vector bundle with a connection, you can do something that we call a parallel transport, right? Okay. So. Um, what is that? Let's explain what that is. Oops. <laughs> All right. So now suppose that we have we are given a vector bundle, a C infinity vector bundle E on M with a connection. nabla, which goes from, again, I'm thinking of this nabla as going from C infinity of E to C infinity of E tensor TM dual, right? And now, as I said, we wanted to try parallel trans Oops. 
Sorry, Elam, I think that you are muted. Elham, oh. you muted yourself. We lost signal from the mic microphone of the iPad, I think. Yes. Elam, could you turn on your microphone on your computer? <laughs> <laughs> 